Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Coming up, a good walk, but not wasted. I'm after rabbits on an Oxfordshire golf course. One lad finds out how a trip to the gym can improve his competitive shooting. First, cold calling. Roy Lupton brings the foxes into hugging range. It's pretty, pretty perfect for some foxing according to Lord Lupton. As usual Roy is keeping the odds in his favour and is doubling up this morning looking for a fallow doe for the freezer and some pre-frozen foxes themselves in need of a meal. We're back out and uh, we're going to finish up our doko hopefully today and maybe pick up the odd fox and it is the perfect, I mean, absolutely perfect morning for calling foxes. The only way it could be any better is if we had a good covering of snow. But everything is, uh, is white. We've had a, a superb frost. It was about minus three, minus four last night. So stalking through the woods is going to be a bit crunchy. But for calling foxes this morning, if anybody's out there and they didn't get a meal last night, they are going to be incredibly hungry and should really give us a good response. Shooting with Roy is his old friend Andy. He's more used to shooting shotguns and shells than rifles and bullets, although he's got plenty of ammunition against the postman, whom he's known for more than 20 years. Andy does a lot of shotgun shooting, not a lot of rifle shooting, so it could go very badly. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> trying to give you confidence before we start. <laughs> no, Andy has done a bit of rifle shooting with me before. Um, but he's getting into the sport a lot more and he wants to get his own rifle, so hopefully we'll uh, get him on with maybe a fox and a deer today. It's fox stop number one. As soon as Roy changes to the silver fox call, we get a response. A handsome dog fox comes to have a look. He stops 50 metres shy of Roy and 80 yards from Andy. Andy was given strict instructions about his arc of fire and this fox ain't in it. We're then joined by a darker and smaller vixen. Roy keeps them in play for five minutes. Neither of them hit the dip, which is where Roy hoped they'd give us a shot. He came in, right in and he, he was staring, looking at me or trying to figure out what I was, but I just kept very still um, and, uh, and just tucked myself into uh, the little bit of cover I had there. Uh, and he couldn't make it out, but you know, he was still there for quite some time, just trying to figure out what was going on. And then he decided just to have a mosey, a mosey out. And I thought he was going to come right across the line of fire in front of um, David with the camera and Andy with the rifle. But he must have just picked up a little bit of sight of our uh, resident meerkat and decided to uh, walk off back down to the brambles so unfortunately we didn't get one on that and the second fox decided to hightail it back down in so we actually had a pair coming in there we had a, a dog and a vixen come up but you know lovely a superb response and again you know, even though we didn't get the shot it's still superb to see them was it a bit wet here david on the other side of the estate david refuses to drive the mitsubishi the extra 50 yards alongside the lake to park closer to the gate but then has to face the abuse I would not take the mickey out of David in his little precious four-wheel drive. <laughs> Just... I'm not going to use it. You, <laughs> you, you can use. You need to use this, David. Just because David didn't want to go over a little muddy patch. <laughs> I do a sensible piece. Well, as David is not really used to driving a four-wheel. No, come on, come on. I, know, I was going to get onto something sensible. Come on. Ready? I used to drive your four-wheel drive you are. on the road. <laughs> <laughs> As David's not used to driving a four-wheel drive off-road, he decided that it looked a little bit sticky here, so we've now got to try and stalk up to a group of deer through probably the worst conditions you could possibly imagine. There's just a very fine layer of ice on top of this very muddy path. <laughs> it's just absolutely terrible, so if we do get into anything, it is going to be a miracle. Well, let's go have a look. <laughs> Thank you. 
he is right and there are no deer, and no foxes for that matter. Our last stop is a favourite. He is taking us to the patch where he had a fox pass right in front of us last spring. He is going to hide behind the same stump using Jack Pike's English oak jacket in order to look like part of the furniture. We've got a nice bank of brambles on the left hand side up the bank there. So if the fox trickles down, hopefully Andy can get a, a safe shot on that there. It could come along the valley here because there's some big, big stands of brambles about 150, 200 yards back there. So it could just come snaking through the valley. We've also got another big stand of brambles along an old railway line up to the right hand side. So it is a fantastic area for a fox laying up, especially this morning. Um, they're going to be hopefully catched up on top just in a little bit of, of sunny glade, just trying to get the, the morning's first sun. Again, the lighter call offers up nothing. The rasp of the silver fox brings in one along the top, but Roy can't see it. And then neither can Andy. Roy might look like he has soiled himself, but that's him straining to be invisible. Directly behind him is a vixen just six feet away. A thinner Lupton might have revealed more fox, but we do see her take off. Moments later, the fox on the top reveals itself. Andy shoots, and it's all too fast for David, who is not even recording. It must be the cold weather. I think it was a vixen came running along this fence line here, and she stopped just there next to the fence, looked at me. And that's, again, no more than about two or three yards. So I was just tucked up here. As I just turned to look at her, obviously that movement was enough to, for her to realise that I wasn't a big, nice, fluffy rabbit. Unfortunately, David's used to getting half an hour warning before a fox comes in with me, with me talking to him and pointing it out. So, um, unfortunately, I don't think David got that one on camera. So, uh, it's either that or Andy was a bit premature, take from it what you will. But at least we got one. Andy is sent to retrieve his fox. The ex-high jumper chooses not to execute a Fosbury flop, but gracefully clears the deer fencing. <laughs> it will be. <laughs> it's a fine-looking vixen, perfect for keeping the local population in check. If you can get on top of your foxes, now is the time to do it before, obviously, they go in <laughs> and start coming. Oh! And uh, the more vixens you can get now, the uh, obviously the more effective your population control is going to be. And we know we've got a lot more foxes in this valley. And it's often the way, especially when you've got a railway line going through a piece of land and you've got um, towns reasonably close, you're always going to get a fresh feed of foxes coming through because the foxes will hunt along the railway lines and then if there's a vacant territory they'll slip into it so again you've just got to be constantly on the top of your game when you're foxing like this and making sure that you keep the numbers down. It has been a lovely morning, no deer, but it is always fascinating stuff getting to see how your quarry reacts to the conditions and the calls. Roy once again playing the Aussie Silver Fox Call well enough to fill the Sydney Opera House. And if you want a chance of winning a Silver Fox Call, pop over to our Facebook page for a caption competition before the end of the first week in March 2015. Plenty more to come in this programme. Rabbit shooting and the shooter's gym workout. First, from Dame Kiri to Dame Edna. It's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Aussie fast bowler Glenn McGrath says he deeply regrets hunting in Zimbabwe. There are pictures online of the legendary Australian bowler with buffalo and hyenas, as well as two elephant tusks. McGrath went on the hunt in 2008, the year his first wife Jane died of breast cancer. He has subsequently gained acclaim for his charity work against the disease. In the UK election campaign, the Labour Party has used the 10th anniversary of the fox hunting ban to lash out against fox hunting and sporting estates. Labour's Maria Eagle pledges to protect birds of prey on shooting estates, to review snaring and to ensure what she calls the humane treatment of game birds. She barred both Basque and the Countryside Alliance from attending the launch of her pledges. George Digweed has started the 2015 clay season with a bang. He's oh. just won the African Compact Championships and in doing so reached a milestone by recording his 199th X100 of his career. Well done George, next stop Dubai. 
A new HFT air rifle competition is being launched today, the 25th of February. The HFT Masters is sponsored by BSA, but is open to all air rifle shooters of all levels. The first of five events will kick off at Lee Valley in Hertfordshire on the 2nd of May 2015. The organisers, including our own Roger Late, promise it'll be a very different hunter field target experience and will offer loads of prizes from pellets to clothing to rifles. For more information, please go to hftmasters.net. Owners of retired greyhounds in Australia have come under attack from animal rights groups. A film on Australian television about how greyhound trainers use live bait to train their dogs has led to people who've rehomed former racing greyhounds receiving abuse from owning dangerous dogs. A Vietnam War veteran now has the technology to go hunting again. US Marine Jerry Bull Baylor has been given a $20,000 all-terrain wheelchair. Well-wishers and friends bought him the track chair, complete with gun rack. He says he can't wait to get out into the woods again. And finally, this is a scene that greeted a motorist in southwest Hungary. It's a type of poaching. Around a thousand red deer are crossing the road. A local man told reporters that the animals were most likely pushed by antler collectors. As they flee, the running deer collide with trees, which may cause their antlers to fall off. They are then collected and sold. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now, last week we met up with the night vision guys from Scott Country, and this week they've taken an ad. Later in the programme, we're after rabbits at night. And we're learning to shoot straight with a trip to the gym. First, it's what you lot have been up to. It's Hello Charlie. Hello Charlie, it's me again. Pigeon shooting this time. My daddy said let on. Good luck, Charlie. Hello Charlie, this is Greg and Rich from Devon. Just been out for a night lamping on the bunny. Got ourselves a good bag there. Charlie, it's Lee from Nottingham here. Just travelled up to South Yorkshire, see what I can do on some decoys. Pretty cold at the moment, but hopefully it'll warm up later. Cheers! Jamie and Iris John here. We had another successful day on the rabbits. We had 31 today with the ferrets. Hello Charlie. <laughs> Bit of rabbit hawking on the North Pennines here. One each at the minute. I'm Paul, that's Steve. Hello. Hello Charlie. It's Andy here from North Wales. Um, so I'm on a piece of land here that I do cut a lot of foxing and uh, various other bits of shooting. And the farmer's uh, giving me a little bell to uh, help him out with some mould problems he's got. So I've been out with a shotgun, you can see a bit of hole in the ground here. And this little fella wants to say, hello Charlie! That's it, please send me your hello Charlie's via Facebook, YouTube, Dropbox or email charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Thank you for those, please keep them coming. Now, golfers are fancy enough not to want foxes to foul their greens. On a championship course somewhere in Oxfordshire, that's where Anthony Champ steps in. After the golfers totter off to the 19th hole, Eddie and Anthony are at the first tee. In this case, literally, Eddie is off to rabbits with a Browning tee bolt with some of those new Winchester 42 grain 2-2 rounds. Anthony is after foxes. These guys like to walk when they go fox and rabbit shooting. On the golf course, they have to walk. Earlier in the day, we took the tee bolt out into a field to zero it, and Anthony had a go with the Browning X bolt, also with Winchester ammunition. Uh, the bolt was nice and easy to use and operate. Uh, rounds were easy to feed, and it's quite a light rifle as well. Torn between that and his usual foxing rifle, he plumps for the one he knows. However, he still has a problem. I will let Eddie explain. We're going back to Anthony's house because he's forgot ammunition. <laughs> As you do. Carry on. <laughs> We're be as quick as we can. That leaves me to watch the sunset until they get back. We reach foxing spot number one, a local livery yard and paddocks. Anthony has to have everything just so before he comes out. Right. Yeah. 
And you don't rush for no one. <laughs> uh, I do apologise for leaving my ammunition at home, um, but you did get some nice recordings of the sunset. Oh, right, I think we're ready. Very soon, the lads reckon they may have spotted a fox. I saw, saw something we thought was a fox, it's actually on closer inspection, it was a muntjack. Um, but it was actually in the brambles, so we couldn't see it properly, so I just had a quick look through the scope. Safety was still on, um, and we discovered it was a muntjack. We don't want to be shooting them at night. Was <laughs> that a lot? There, there are a lot around here. Hell of a lot. A lot um, especially on the bit of ground we're going to later, it's infested with muntjack. There's absolutely loads of them. But, um, obviously you can't shoot them at night, so... <laughs> We stop at a tree stump and Anthony starts calling. He has a whole brass band and woodwind section slung around his neck. These are the highlights. I've got the best fox call, um, the little plastic one. Uh, I've walked... That's a really sort of high pitch, so you got... Nothing doing here, so it's time to make house-to-house -house inquiries. Well, den to den. This is actually uh, the foxes. The foxes earth. Uh, we actually found it about three or four weeks ago, um, and it is fresh, as I said earlier. They're actually using this track underneath this, these bushes here. They're actually coming out. I don't know if you can see the fence with that. They actually come out through there um, and then go along and do their business. But, um, it's, it is very active. But nobody's home, except for Eddie. He gets his first rabbit of the evening. <laughs> After this, we pack and move to the main event. Anthony describes it. Uh, we're on another permission now. Uh, this permission's about 500 odd acres. Um, it's a local golf course. We have actually got another fox's earth, sort of 300 yards straight in front of us over there. Um, I'm not sure whether it's active, but um, I know it's there, so hopefully one will pop out for us. We settle down under Orion the Hunter for another fox calling session. Anthony's lips are going to be blue. Meanwhile, the countryside around lights up red and green. Another kit item the lads take seriously are the lamps. Uh, these are the Nightmaster 800s. Uh, we've got one in, one in red. And then we've got one in green. There. Oh, so that's, that's, that's fox stop, fox go, is that right? Pretty much. <laughs> Normally they just go. <laughs> but um, yeah, simply I use the green um, if I know they're not lamp shy. Um, we have got a white one kicking around somewhere, but I don't actually know what that is. Um, and obviously the red for the, the shy ones that don't sit there anyway. <laughs> There are lots of rabbits, but you have to be quick. Eddie eventually gets another one. Then he gets two for the price of one. Everyone celebrates a successful outing in a different way. Eddie, after he has shot a rabbit, now he likes to do impressions. Sweet Jesus. Come here, Jessup. Smell my fingers. Oh, no. No fox for Anthony, so that's it. He refuses to do his dance. I have to do it after, though. Because it, it depends what mood I'm in. <laughs> For those of you who missed it on Field Sports Channel News a few weeks ago, here it is again. Nicked off Facebook kind of lamping foxes got talent. <laughs> we 
we head for the vehicles. That's badger damage. In the end, we do see foxes, but Anthony doesn't get a chance to level his rifle, nor me my camera. Uh, could have gone better. Uh, obviously, our primary job was uh, shooting foxes, um, but we actually saw we saw two, um, and Charlie and Eddie were talking, so uh, we didn't catch them on film. <laughs> it was important discussion. Oh, very, yeah, very important. High level, very high level. It was very high level. Yeah. For more about Browning's T-Bolt and X-Bolt, have a look at browningint.com. And to find out more about the laser, a laserware glacier, go to laserware.co.uk. Thank you, golfers, for a perfect habitat for shooting. Now, from the world of golf to a better world of sport, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Let's start with the Continentals, where the current hunting film trend is long dreamy shots with lots of depth of field and epic music. Halali Magazine TV is on what we Brits would call a mixed, driven and rough day in the lower Rhine region of Germany, but it's a lot better than that. Even if you don't speak German, this is a great film to watch just for the comparisons with your own driven shooting. Browning's Rifles Department sends one of its own to Scotland for a deer-stalking film. There's a moment of suspense in a hunting film when the shooter is is lined up, the animal is unaware, but the trigger remains as yet unsqueezed. Browning's new x SF promo film manages to make this moment last a full five minutes. Those on the continent who don't own a DSLR and can't afford a cameraman have a GoPro, like this film of pigeon shooting in Belgium in February, sent to me by viewer Leon van Heesbroek. Thank you, Leon. The dreamy DSLR films are a lot easier on the eye than action films such as this, but you have to give it to hunting game working dogs for trying. This is a dog called Panther catching a hare on the YouTube channel that goes with the new long dog forum at huntgameworkdogs.com. Even speedier and just as hard to focus on is Peach the Peregrine, who catches a drake gadwall in this film. Started last summer, Get Foxed TV is brought to you by UK fox call supplier Best Fox Call. Here they are foxing in Dorset. Staying on foxes and the lambing season is underway across large parts of the UK. The films from long distance specialist 260 Rips get better and better. In this one, he is using a 223 and N750 night vision. And finally, winner of the ratings prize in the last week is Idaho Archery Elk Hunt by Hutton with Laver. Great YouTuber, great film, and this is probably his top hunt of the year. That's it for this week. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. If you didn't like any of those, why not have a look at Airheads with top HFT shot Roger Late. He's showing us around Pete's airgun farm in Essex and shooting the new BSA Gold Star SE. We have good fill hunting with Mr. Price clearing up some doves from above, and Tell tells us the tastiest way to cook his favourite game, Grey Squirrel. School's challenge this week is all about how shooters can improve their chances by going to the gym, and we have our very own Cindy Crawford Nigel helping one of the shooting stars of tomorrow, Tom, to get fit for shooting. And you, you can join in too. sort of routine that I want you to go through. Lift an arm up and then lift the other arm up. Okay. See mine's not much straighter than yours. Okay. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Really pull the abs in nice and tight as we do this. Okay. It's all about focus. You're now getting yourself in that mindset to win that gold medal. Right? This is getting you mentally prepared. It's getting the muscles warmed up as well. But it's getting you mentally prepared. Breathe out. And now take that right arm, push it across to the left, twist through the waist but not the hips, bring it round. Left arm across to right, pull it round. You see where we're going with this one? With that back movement that we had when we had the gun, we had that rotation through the back. So we're now stretching and limbering up the back. And on the next one, we shall start warming up the shoulders. So push the right arm across, up and over the top, loosen the shoulders up. Reach across, over, push across, over. And now take the arms by the side, big deep breath in, take up. Exhale, as we take the arms down to the side, just drop the chin to chest because we need to loosen up the neck as well. Big deep breath in. 
and exhale as we drop the chin to chest and now fold ourselves vertebrae by vertebrae as low as you can go doesn't matter how far you go when you get there uncurl vertebrae by vertebrae rolling those shoulders back six hours is a long time you've got to start it the right way if you don't start it the right way what happens in hour six is irrelevant you've got to get the first minute you've got to get it sorted straight away good work well done if you want to find out more about how keeping fit helps you shoot straighter, watch this week's Schools Challenge TV. Well, we are back next week. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Please go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv. Click to like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box. And we'll constantly contact you about Field Sports Britain out 7pm UK time every Wednesday. This has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing. And goodbye. Goodbye.